There we okay. go. Okay, sweet. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. My name is Shannon, and I'm going to be your project instructor. So um, if you've been with us for some previous um, Copic demos, um, first we did a wave bookmark. Next, we did a um, goodie bag. And now today we're going to do my personal favorite demo, which is showing you guys how to use your Copic markers to make shrink plastic earrings and um, other necklaces or like um, bracelet charms or whatnot. So today is one of my favorite demos and it's going to be a little more hands on. So I'm going to be more thorough whenever I explain the materials and um, go into more depth on my steps as we're moving along. So before I get um, diving into the demo, um, I wanna let you guys know a little bit about me. So my, again, my name is Shannon and um, I've been using Copic markers for about 11 years now. And um, my passion for creativity really took off um, when I was in eighth grade at about 13 years old. And that passion for creativity took me through college. Um, I attended the Savannah College of Art and Design and received my BFA in illustration. And for the past year or so, I've been working with Copic and I'm um, using my tips and tricks and sharing them um, with the company and with you guys today. So I'm going to actually share with you a little sneak peek. Um, so these are an example of the earrings that we're gonna make today. And um, these are the pumpkin shapes. I'm actually wearing them as a necklace right now as well. So you can hook this onto a necklace chain. Um, again, if you wanna make a bracelet, that will work perfectly fine too. But this is just a little example. And um, when you signed up for the demo, there was a downloadable template sheet um, with four different shapes on it. So I'll be working off of that downloadable template. Um, and yeah, with that being said, I do wanna mention that um, Nate is in the chat. So if you guys have any questions, he can answer them. Um, if not, Nate will probably uh, shoot them my way and I'll answer them the best I can. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the screen and we're gonna get started. Is my overhead view in? Yeah, we can see it just fine. Okay, awesome. All right, so here we are on um, our overhead view and um, I have a lot of different materials right here. So um, first off, I have my Copic Chow six piece primary set. So, um, you know, I had the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. For today's demo in particular, and because we're using shrink plastic, I'm only going to use these four colors. Um, these two towards the end here are very dark. And when you apply the heat to the plastic, they get even darker. So that's why today I'm going to use these um, lighter tone colors. I also have my um, 1.0 multi-liner pen over here. And then I also have some masking tape, um, some tweezers. I've got uh, my earring hooks. I've got, um, again, my example that I showed you guys earlier. I have scissors, um, my pliers, um, a hole punch. Um, underneath here, you have I have my shrink plastic sheets and my heat gun. I also have um, a paper towel here that I will use later on for a new technique that's very, very fun. So um, these are all my materials that I'm going to use. And I'm gonna start um, taking away some of the items that I'm not gonna use right away. Oh, and I do want to mention, I think I forgot this because it had an item on top of it. This glass bowl, this is just a little Pyrex bowl. Um, this will be great for placing our shrink plastic in. So when we apply the heat, um, it won't uh, blow away. So this is a nice uh, glass container to have. Okay. So right here, We've got our template and um, I'll hold a ruler up for you guys to have as reference. Um, but these shapes are about um, three inches um, to three inches, either two and a half, three inches. Obviously this shape down here is um, a little bit taller, a little bit skinnier, but this size of um, template works really well when you're using the um, shrink plastic um, because it heats and it shrinks to a very good size. Um, if you work larger than say four and a half to five inches, the plastic itself will start to have um, a lot of different effects and can cause a bit more complications. So I like to stay within this uh, three by three inch range, give or take. 
Okay, so I've got um, my sheet of shrink plastic. This particular brand has a like watermark and a grid mark behind it. Um, I actually kind of like it because it helps guide me and um, you know where to cut and whatnot too. So I like that feature. Um, with this particular brand as well, you have this film and when you heat it, it um, like uh, detaches from the plastic. So no worries later on uh, when you're heating. Hey Shannon, quick question. We don't have these templates up on the site just yet, but we will, right? Yes. Yes. So, yeah, so Pat, they were uh, like, go, go. Oh, sorry. I was just saying when you sign up for the class, they should be there on the list of materials and you could click on it and download it. Yep. We have other yeah. templates as well on our website at copic.2.com. I'll put that link in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have this on there just yet, but after the demo, we will. Um, but yeah. And again, these shapes that I'm using, um, they're pretty simple. Um, the more curves and tricks that you've got, the harder it is um, to cut out, or I guess the longer it is to cut out. Um, so I'm keeping things really simple today, and I'm just going to use the pumpkin. Okay, so I've got my shrink sheet and um, placed it over the pumpkin shape. And so now I'm going to get out some uh, tape and just lightly tape it to my paper template. And um, if you want to, you could laminate this template um, in case you're afraid of getting marks on it. But um, this is just a regular printer paper sheet. Okay, and what I'm actually gonna do is bring out an example. I always like to set my finished piece here um, for you guys to compare. And I'm gonna begin coloring, but I will lift this up and bring it closer to the camera so you guys have a better angle of this um, once I finish each step. Okay, so I'm gonna take out my chow this is um, Y15. And um, what I really love about Copic Chow is that they have the same two nibs as the Copic Sketch. So it's got your medium broad and your super brush. Um, for today's demo, I'm only going to be using the super brush um, simply because it's very flexible and it works really well with the plastic. But if you don't have the Copic Chow and you happen to have Copic Sketch, um, again, the same two nibs. So that will be working perfectly fine. Um, and if you also want to color your pumpkin, you know, purple, that's fine too. I'm just using the more um, realistic colors for this demo today. Okay. And um, so what I'm going to do is um, just go ahead and shade in each of these segments with the yellow. And if you notice, I'm going to hold this one up really quick. Um, if you notice too, the midsection, I like to keep highlighted. And then I'll shade in some oranges on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to use the flicking technique. If you joined us in the weeks prior, um, we're going to use that flicking technique there. OK, so I'm going to just go ahead and color in each segment of the pumpkin with this yellow color. And depending on which brand of shrink plastic you have that you're working with, um, some are more slick surface. So you'll hear that marker squeaking sound. Um, this is more of a frosted shrink plastic. So you're not going to hear any of those um, squeaks. Shannon, and I also side, chose, up or down? What'd you say? Smooth side up or down, Shannon? Do I what? Ooh, sorry, smooth side up or down. We actually have a question from Stepman. Oh, the smooth side of the paper. OK, yeah. So um, well, for this particular brand, like you can tell, this is a lot darker. This is the back side. So I know that this is the front. Um, but if you're using a clear sheet where you can't really tell, um, that means either side would work just fine. All right. Um, yeah. And so if you have a frosted sheet, you should be able to tell because there's a bit of a texture. That's why it's frosted. It's more opaque. Um, so yeah, I like this brand of shrink plastic because it gives really good um, consistent results, especially when you shrink it. Um, and it also doesn't have that squeak. Um, the alcohol pigment actually sticks pretty well to this particular brand also. So that's why I chose this one. Okay, so let me hold this up real quick for you guys to see. So all I did there was just color in those segments of the pumpkin in this bright yellow color. So now I'm going to take the um, YR04, uncap it on the super brush side, and I'm going to flick and lift my marker as I'm moving towards the middle. Again, I'll bring in my example here. 
but I'll start in the left hand side and flick the marker up. And I'm not adding many strokes, just a few. And I'm kind of eyeballing it, but trying to divide it into thirds, making sure that midsection of the pumpkin stays very bright and highlighted. So there, I've added my oranges in the bottom. Now I'll go from the top and do the same thing. So again, just adding in these um, quick little brush marks. That's why I really love the super brush nib in particular. It's very flexible, but not too, um, too much of a mop. It's very um, good for blending like this. Okay, and um, I'm gonna lift this up and show you guys again. So I've added in those orange flicks. And what's nice about shrink plastic is that um, the, if you see any particular um, strokes, those will go away when they melt. So if, if you see like a particular stroke that stands out to you, um, those little details will uh, not 100% go away, but they will um, be more minimal. So I'm actually going to take this um, orange shape and draw a parallel line to the outline. I'm doing this just so that each segment stands out more. I'm just creating more contrast this way. So there we go. Cap my orange color and set it aside. And the last thing that I'm going to do, I'm, I'm gonna color this green um, just to use the color straight out of the marker. But if you wanna make it brown or any other color, um, if you do the red plus the purple, that will give you a brown color. So if you want to do that, use this um, R37 and the BV08. If you layer those on top of your plastic, um, it will give you more of a brown color. Okay, so I'm going to take this green and fill this area in as best I can. Um, again, I really love the quality of this shrink plastic. But sometimes with these watermarks on the back, it's hard to see where exactly I'm coloring. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. If I go outside the lines, I get to cut it out later. So that's really nice. So here we go. I'm just going to lift this up. And that is what our pumpkin is looking like so far. So now I'm going to take my multi liner and outline the shape of the pumpkin. So I've got my multi liner 1.0 right here. And um, I'm using the thickest multi-liner nib that Copic has. So this is 1.0. This one's very thick. And it makes it really easy for quick outlining. But that nib is a very thick and um, actually one of my favorites. I love this because I like to color large areas. So, OK, and now I'm just going to start in the middle here and add in these outlines. Turn my page so you guys can see. But yeah, I'm just bringing it around and um, kind of working slow and steady with my hand. Let me go ahead and finish the stem right here. I like the little um, curves and the bumps that I've got on the shape. So I want to try and preserve that as best I can. And I actually do have a question to the audience. Um, how many of you guys have worked with shrink plastic before? I just started using shrink plastic um, about a year ago and I really love the different effects you can get with it. And I really had no idea Cobix would work so well with them. Actually, a bunch of people in the chat have worked with shrink plastic. Uh, Kristen Vitale brings up, it's definitely an underrated medium. Yeah, definitely. No, I would agree. And again, I thought that, you know, shrink plastic would just make the markers really squeaky and like wouldn't actually stick to the pigment. But again, this particular brand that I found, it works really well and has really good um, consistent effects to it too. So yeah, I'm going to lift this up and show you guys. And am I moving too fast or is my pace going okay? 
just want to make sure I'm going a decent pace here. Okay, so there's my one pumpkin shape. And um, what I'm going to do now, um, for the sake of the demo, um, and because this is going to be recorded, um, I'm not going to repeat the exact same shape since I've got four to work with. So all you need to do to make a pair of earrings is just to repeat this. I'm actually going to um, slide to this shape down here that's long and skinny. This shape is also very easy and quick to cut out. So I'm gonna go ahead and move to this shape. And again, if you want to um, get more uh, details and information on how I made the pumpkin, um, the recording will be posted. Again, I'm just working for the demo. Okay, so if you noticed, I actually turned my template around. I'm doing that so that it fits snug to my shrink plastic. Um, I don't wanna waste any area of my shrink plastic. So I'm kind of turning my paper and making sure that it, I'm not wasting any room. Okay, so I'm gonna use my tape again and gently tape it to my template. Okay, and now um, I'm gonna use a uh, slightly different color combination. So I'm actually going to color um, the leaf shape with the red and then the inside um, with the yellow and the orange. So let's actually start with our lightest color first. I'm gonna color this in with the yellow. So I've added that one layer of yellow. I'm gonna use my orange now, my YR04. Shannon, we've and got I'm another going... material question. Another what? Another materials question. Uh, sure. Susan wants to know, can you use Sharpie markers with this? Um, yes, Sharpies are alcohol. Um, they have quite an odor, so just be careful. Make sure you're in a ventilated area. Um, but yes, you can use Sharpies if you want. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you noticed, I had the yellow first and then I flicked the orange. I'm going to actually use the yellow again to soften that blend with just a few quick strokes. Because again, this is plastic, so you can't really layer that many times like you could with marker paper. So it's a different type of surface, kind of finicky, but still gives really good effects and good blends. Okay, so now I'm going to take my red and I'm going to outline the leaf shape. And again, I'm just making sure my hand is comfortable and um, working relatively quickly. With plastic, sometimes um, the color will settle uh, a lot faster than paper and that's just due to the surface. So that's why I'm working lickety split. Okay, yeah, I quickly added in those. And now that I'm at the outlining process, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it. But again, this is a very nice, vibrant, rich red color. If you want to, actually, I'll show you guys this as well. Um, you can add a few flicks to make some more depth. But again, because it's plastic, you really can't do too many layers. But you can do about two, maybe three depending on your surface of the plastic, what brand you're using. So we've got a little bit of a gradation there, um, just using the same color twice. So now I'm gonna use my multi-liner pen yet again. I love these multi-liners, they work really well with your Copics. Okay, so I'm gonna color, sorry, outline this curve on the outside. And just, um, yeah, work from the middle here. If you want to add more line variation, you can as well. And by line variation, I just mean, you know, say I want to make this stem part thicker, I can make another line um, parallel to the first one I drew and kind of meet it somewhere in the middle. So we've got a little bit more thin and thick. Okay, I'm gonna draw a line here at my stem. And then bring this around. 
Um, I do want to mention too that if you're not too keen on making your own template or didn't have time today to print this out before the demo, um, stamps, I think, would probably work on shrink plastic. Or if you had um, a printed design, you could probably run a sheet of plastic, depending on your printer, um, through a printer. And that way you don't have to um, you know, outline everything. You could just have your design and then use your colors. Okay, so I'm just adding a few lines in here to add some detail. And I will lift this up for you guys to see as I untape it. Okay, so here we go. We've got this, um, again, you can kind of see my hand underneath it. We've got this red and a uh, yellow um, leaf shape. And we've also got our pumpkin shape. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and actually cut these two shapes out and set this template aside and grab my scissors. And again, I just, I don't want to waste any shrink plastic paper. So I like to cut pretty much as close as I possibly can. Um, you can cut you know, directly on the line. Um, I don't like to hold, keep the weight of the paper there. So I don't cut as precise. And I'm cutting that out. So I'm gonna start here um, with this pumpkin where the stem is and just keep um, working around the outside of my shape. So again, for the, the demo today, I'm working with my easier shapes on the template. But if you wanted to color any of the other shapes, I'm excited to see how your guys' turn out. Shannon, we've got a question about yes. the size of the pumpkin you're currently working on. Uh, what's the size you're working on right now? Um, this is about three by three inches, give or take. I think it's like two and uh, three fourths by two and three fourths. Um, but yeah, I mentioned at the very beginning of the demo, uh, probably when people were still logging in, um, not to work too much above four and a half by four and a half inches. When you apply the heat, as you'll notice in a few minutes, the shrink plastic will shrivel up and like crinkle up on itself. And if your image um, pre before it's shrunk, if it's too big, sometimes those little kinks um, don't correct themselves. So that's why I like to stay within the three by three inch area. And I, going off of that too, um, I'm not making incisions deep into my design. So for example, if this was a flower and I had petals, I don't wanna to cut too far in because again, that's going to be a lot harder to flatten out and to make sure it stays smooth once the heat is applied. So that's why these shapes are pretty, um, pretty simple and straightforward. That's just another tip that I have learned through making my own mistakes. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one out really quick. Is there any more um, questions that I can yeah, answer? Yeah, we, we got a couple actually. Let's see, sure. we gotta go through the list real fast. So Kathy yeah. wants to know if you ink stamp, do you stamp color and still mark the outline or just stamp in color? Ooh, see, I, That's I don't have a lot of- That's not what we're working on today, but like, I think it's worth checking. Yeah, um, I because I am a Copic person and I've been using these for so long, um, I have never actually tried out stamps with shrink plastic, but I know that it does work. I have seen it. You know who might have an answer? Karina in the chat. Karina also works uh, with us at Copic. Uh, Karina, do you think you could answer this customer in the chat about ink stamping? Maybe we could figure out some technique to make these shrink plastic earrings with uh, stamps. Tracy, actually Shannon, Tracy wants to know, um, would it be okay to use a light box for tracing on the shrink plastic or would that cause a problem with the heat from the light box? Yeah, so if you do wanna use a light box, um, that would work. I would just think that, you know, for the tracing purpose, just make sure you're not heating on the light box. That would, sounds like a, a recipe for disaster. <laughs> so, cause the light box produces a lot of heat in itself. So, you know, trace over the light box with your plastic and then, you know, move it away when you're melting it. But other than that, I think it should work. Um, check the label of your shrink plastic to make sure, but I've, I think that would be fine. 
All right, cool. Okay, I'm actually going to start off here with my pumpkin shape and I've got my um, paper towel behind me here. And so what I'm gonna do is a very, very fun technique. And this is actually a technique I recently learned. Um, again, after using these markers for 11 years, you'd think I would know it all, but this technique is one of my favorites. So I've got a clear sheet of plastic that I'm going to use with my super brush nib to flick against the plastic and to make a splattering effect. So do you see here on this earring how I have all these um, splatters and whatnot? This is a spontaneous effect that I got by um, splattering on shrink plastic itself. So that is what I'm going to do next with my green color. I like how the green stands out against these bright oranges and yellows. So at this point too, you will hear a marker squeak. But also I do wanna mention, I pinch it and I curve the shrink plastic into almost like a U shape with my thumb. So I don't just flick against it straight on, I kind of curl it. So I'm gonna do that with my thumb and curl it and I'm going to flick. Oh, looks like I got a few pieces of ink off the side here. But when I curve the plastic, it gives me more direction of where my splatters are going. Um, and also um, gives off more ink this way. So I will set that down and lift that up. Can you guys see all those little speckles and dots? Yeah, so all I did there was um, flick with my super brush nib to get those effects. Um, so far, uh, I've used markers, a lot of these for the flicking technique and the edge of my nib is not frayed or it's not damaged. But if you do this um, a lot and your nib does happen to get a little bit damaged, Copic does have um, replacement nibs and um, they look like this. So oh, the plastic, you can't see the reflection, but it comes in a packet like this. And if you do have damaged nibs, you can always replace them. So that's really nice about your Copic markers. You don't have to uh, throw them away if that happens, so. Just a little side note. Okay, I'm gonna set my pumpkin aside and I'm gonna bring my other shape out, this longer and skinnier one. And what I'm gonna do here is actually use one of these really dark colors. I'm gonna use this um, blue and I'm gonna flick it just a couple times because again, it's, it's a pretty dark, rich, if I draw on the napkin, you'll see how dark that blue is. It's very pretty. Um, actually one of my favorite Copic colors. So again, I'll curl the plastic, pinched it with my thumb, and I'll make a couple flicks. Something about this technique is oddly satisfying for me. So I really love this part of the demo and the following parts that I'm about to show. So that is what that blue looks like. I only added a couple of flick marks there but I like the blue because it makes it um, really stand out against these really light colors and gives some nice purple effects with the red as those colors blend. So that is what this shape looks like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get out my hole punch. And I'm going to punch a hole at the top. But when I punch this hole, I wanna make sure I'm not too close to any of the edges. Um, if you do happen to cut too far against the edge, when you shrink it, it's going to have some issues and it'll break, uh, break apart. And we don't want that to happen because we want to have an easy um, fish hook to make our earrings or whatnot. So I'm going to go around this area and I'm going to punch a hole. So I'll flip it so you guys can see. Um, yeah, we're about there. It looks good. Okay, so if you notice, if I'm holding this against the white surface, you can see, um, you know, it's not too close, but close enough that we have a good um, incision right there. And this circle itself will shrink very small when we add the heat. Okay, I'll set that down and do the same thing here for the pumpkin. I'm going to go right in this area right there. So I'll turn that around, make sure it's lined up where I want it and punch. Okay, perfect. So but if you notice, 
Shannon, real quick Maybe. before you uh, before you finish up with this, uh, Jean has a question. Where do you get that little piece of scrap plastic you use for flicking? Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is actually just a scrap from another brand of shrink plastic. Um, I could have cut out, you know, a sheet from here. I could cut this little piece out um, and use that to flick against. So that's all it is. It's just a different scrap that I had laying by. Um, but yeah, if you happen to have any other little spare scraps of plastic, that would work. I'm going to do want to hold this up and let you guys see. Look at how close I got right there to on um, the edge. That was a little closer than I had hoped, but this should be okay. I just want to um, let you guys know that's a little, a little bit too close. Okay, so now is the really fun part. I'm going to um, slide aside my markers and whatnot and um, show you guys the shrinking process. So again, this is where the crowd goes ooh and ah because this is where your um, you know, design can go from this size to this size. And if you notice too, this looks very bright and notice how much darker it gets once it is shrunk. So again, this is just a little bit of a comparison. We've got the pre you know, uh, drawn out design and this is how small it gets whenever it is shrunk. Okay. So I'm going to place this in my little bowl and I'm going to have on deck um, my tweezers. So I, in this part, I am going to work very quickly because it's, things are going to get toasty um, and I only have a very short amount of time to make any changes if I need to, to my pumpkin because um, it cools off very fast. So I will turn on my heat gun. It's going to be a little bit noisy. Um, but I'm going to apply the heat. And when I do, you will see this shape kind of crumple and fold. But um, don't panic if that happens. That's normal. And I want to let you know that you know that it's fully heated when it lays flat again. And if you happen to have a kink or something in your plastic, um, it might not be perfectly flat. But I have not had that happen at all with this brand of shrink plastic. So again, you know it's fully heated and ready for, you know, cooling off or to turn off your heat gun when it's flat again. Okay, so I'm going to bring out my heat gun. While you are looking for that, Shannon, uh, someone brings up, if you don't have a heat gun, can you use a hairdryer or do you need that directed like force heat? Yeah, so the, the hairdryer is not going to be hot enough um, for shrink plastic. Um, so I think the right temperature is 325 degrees or higher. Yeah, um, we're seeing a couple people gun. say ovens work. Yes, they Those do. Yes, yeah, so indeed. So if you even had like an easy bake oven or a toaster oven um, or just your regular oven in the kitchen, um, that works too. So say I made 20 pumpkins, laid them out on a cookie sheet and put them in the oven. You can definitely do that as well. So um, just for the sake of the demo and not having you guys go into my kitchen, um, we're going to use the heat gun. So I've got um, more of an industrial grade heat gun here. It's got um, two temperature settings. I'm going to use the higher one. Um, and it's also got these little prongs. So that's how I'll set it up later. But yeah, let me uh, move this over. Again, my tweezers on deck. And if you have any finger gloves um, or like uh, heat sensitivity, that might be a good idea. I'm barely gonna touch this once it's heated. So um, I'll work mostly with my tweezers. But yeah, I'm gonna do this. And I have other samples here to um, keep showing this process if you need me to. But again, a little bit noisy. So here we go. to remove this sheet of plastic that came off, flip it over to its right side. I don't want to burn my hands, but I'm going to bring this closer for you guys to see.
Okay, there it's laying flat. I'm gonna slide it out of the glass onto my surface. Tweezers on deck, use it to smooth it out so it's flat. And again, I'm touching it very quickly with my fingers, but these are just, um, you know, regular cosmetic tweezers, just household items. There's other tools out there specifically for shrink plastic, but again, this is more of a DIY. So I'm lifting that up and this is what that pumpkin looks like. And um, let me go ahead and hold that against my napkin that's white. And I'll show you with another one. So they look very similar, they shrink in a very similar way. If I had any bumps or wanted any changes, I can place this in the glass bowl and reheat it and um, reactivate the plastic. So if I wanted to say curve it or make it into a different shape instead of laying it flat, you can do that by reheating it. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys again with my other shape. I'll set my pumpkins aside. And um, I'm gonna try and I'll hold this up more um, to my phone so that you guys can see this angle. Okay, set that aside. Um, before I do this, are there any other questions with the heat gun or like anything of that nature that I could answer really quick? Nate? Not yet. We're actually handling everything in the chat so far. A couple questions okay. real quick about the hole punch itself. It's just a standard hole punch, right? Like between six and eight millimeters, just a normal one. Yeah, this I think I say? actually got at Walgreens, like in their school supply section. Um, so very, very standard, the most extreme standard. <laughs> so uh, Same with see. sorry, Chris Benty's question, do you need to turn it in the oven? You do not need to turn it over in the oven. Uh, Maria, you can buy the shrink paper at Michael's. Uh, shrink mm -hmm. plastic in this case. Um, yes. And doo -doo 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 -doo, sorry, uh, Lou wants to know if you can use a glass cup because you're using a Pyrex cup, but can they use yes. a glass cup? Um, I think as long as it's like some kind of dish that's um, oven safe, because again, the temperature of my heat gun is similar to the temperature in an oven. So as long as what you're using, if it's a ceramic dish or not, as long as it's good for, it says oven safe, you should be fine. Uh, can you use a microwave oven? I'm not sure about microwave oven. Um, if Karina's in the chat, Karina might know that answer. Okay, but um, yeah, so this shape is coming a little bit higher up in my in my bowl. Um, when I hold my um, heat gun up, um, it loses focus on the object. So I'm gonna try my best to hold it up. Um, if I put it back down and it's harder to see, it's just because the bowl is getting hot. I don't wanna burn myself, so. Please practice uh, safe uh, crafting when you guys are doing this at home. Okay, I'm gonna light it up again and we're gonna see this one shrink too. Okay, again, I'm just quickly removing this piece of paper and again. Okay, slide her out real quick. Tweezers on deck, smooth it out. I'm quickly touching with my fingers, but again, not very much because it's still hot. Well, there we go. Okay, grab my napkin. Okay, that's what that shape looks like. Holding it up as best I can. Okay, yeah. So again, this red got pretty dark um, once we heated it up. And you saw it um, because this shape is longer and skinnier, it was kind of twirling when it was inside the bowl. Uh, that will happen. It's actually very common. And that's also why I like to have the bowl with the higher kind of borders here. So it doesn't go flying off into my workstation. That's, a, that's the last thing I want to happen. 
So, but yeah, this is what this leaf shape looks like. And um, before I attach the um, earring hooks, I'm actually going to do the other two shapes that I have um, pre-colored and um, pre-cut so that you guys see what the other two look like. So again, from our template, we had um, you know, this shape as well. And we also had this uh, more pointy kind of maple shape. So um, I've called, I've sorry, shrunk the pumpkin, um, this uh, longer slender shape. And now I'm gonna do this more curved and then we'll do the last one. So again, um, my apologies for the camera view. Um, it does get pretty hot, so I can't hold it up, but I will try my best to let you guys see this. Okay, I'm gonna do this again. Okay, quickly remove this sheet. That's, that's toasty. And again. Okay, now that that's laying flat, slide that out. Tweezers, just to make sure it's smooth. And again, it gets um, hardened within a few seconds. So at this point, you gotta work really, really quick. Let me get my pig pal again. And as a comparison, I'll put all three here for you. So that's what we've got so far. The three items from that template, we've got this pumpkin, we've got this longer and skinnier leaf shape with that deep red color, and then we've got this uh, more curved leaf shape. Okay, last but not least, I'm going to show you guys what the final shape looks like. And I do want to mention too, with this brand, we've got these crinkled sheets. Um, they have a little bit of a stick to them. So you can just kind of put them together, crinkle them up and um, toss them in your trash bin. Okay, let's do the final one. Um, I do want to mention too, as I'm looking in the chat and seeing um, questions about overheating, um, I actually have a more industrial grade heat gun um, that I'm working with. Um, but you can find other heat guns or toaster ovens or, you know, whatnot, um, for you to work with. If you happen to have, say you hear a little clicking sound, um, usually that means it's overheated. So just let it, you know, cool down for about five minutes or so, and then your heat gun should be back to business and um, good to go. Okay. So last shape, I actually want to show you guys what this green will look like. And this is actually an example without the speckles, without the little dots. So again, just to have as a different example of, um, say if you just want to color it, this is what it will look like. So let's lay that in here and do it one more time. Again, gotta, gotta move that real quick. Okay. Slide this out really quick. Tweezers on deck, smooth it out. This shape actually lays, uh, for some reason, out of all my shapes in the template, it lays very flat, very easily. And, um, sure that. oh, no, I just bent it. Okay, make sure that's flat before it hardens, okay. I also just realized as I was shrinking that I forgot to punch the hole. 
So that won't be an earring. Maybe it'll be glued to a ring. Um, but yeah, so that's what that um, green looks like. Again, hoping that my brightness is good enough here in my camera view. But that is what that shape, maybe if I hold it up, that's actually better. So that's what the green looks like when it's shrunk. It's actually quite a pretty color. I really love in this primary set, I particularly love those, uh, the yellow, the orange and the green colors, some of my favorites. But again, here's the pumpkin with the speckles. Here's our red longer and skinnier leaf shape. And here is our other curved shape. Okay, so remember how I said these were about um, three by three inches? I'm gonna grab my ruler and actually measure this. So the pumpkin when it's shrunk is about one inch. Same with this shape. So they're about one third of the size. Again, just holding these up. This is about one and a half inches long. Um, but yeah, they get to about one third of the size. So just um, wanna make sure you guys know that whenever you wanna make your own. Okay, so um, before we can go ahead and end the demo, is there anything else that you guys want me to repeat or any other questions you guys have for me? Uh, Nate, is there anything in the... We're listening. <laughs> yeah, and if you want um, to turn on your camera, if you guys have followed along with me or are just you know practicing with your own templates, I'd love to see what you guys have made. Yeah, so far folks do not have um, any questions. They're just very grateful for the demonstration itself. Uh, if anybody has been following along and made any projects, please hold them up to the camera so we can take a look at them. Or you can just wave at the camera if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, we can just wave, yeah. Yeah, again, well, before I started the demo, I mentioned that this was a very hands-on um, demo and that it required more tools and whatnot. So that's the joy of these Michaels demos is that um, they're recorded and you can go back um, when you do have the supplies. Oh, sweet, I see a couple, that's awesome. Teresa, I see a few, I see Michelle. Oh, these are okay, looking good. Awesome. Yeah, those look great. Yeah, I'm just looking and um, trying to see if anyone else has anything up. But yeah, those are awesome. Okay, sweet, thank you guys. Um, but yeah, is there any other uh, questions? I think we're good. I think we're good, okay. Um, yeah, well, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, I am gonna drop this in here as well. Um, you know, tag us if you've created these um, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. Um, I also have a personal Instagram if you guys wanna see what I'm up to with my Copic markers. I use them every single day and I really am obsessed with them. So if you have any other questions, you know, please reach out to us on any of these social channels. And um, we do have one more demo scheduled for next Thursday. Um, also at 4 p.m. Central Time. And that is going to be another more hands-on demo um, with the airbrush system. So I'm gonna introduce how to use airbrush system um, using stencils and Copic Sketch. So that will be next week, uh, same day of the week on Thursday, same time at 4 p.m. Central. And uh, Nate will also be with me for that in the chat. So thank you guys so much for talking with him too. Okay. Uh, Nate, anything else? I think that's it. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining. I really can't wait to see what you guys do with Shrink Plastic and Copic. Okay. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. All right, peace out, everybody. See you next week.